Hi class, welcome to our lecture series part 2 on good governance and corporate social responsibility. Let's get started. CSR is all both critical and controversial. I have explained this during our last synchronous class and we'll just run through this uh, very, uh, very, you know, just to, just to make a review for you to also retain the discussions on this matter. So it's, it's critical because of the for-profit sector, it's, it's the largest and most innovative part in any free society's economy because it creates jobs, wealth, innovations that enable the society to prosper. Delivery system for food, housing, healthcare, and other life necessities. Business, uh, businesses, it's a typo, a typo here. Businesses are the engines of society that propel toward a better future. That's why it's critical. Uh, corporate social rep responsibility and good governance, good governance is crucial, is critical because of these uh, reasons. Without such, uh, there might be an imbalance in the economy or in the ecosystem in general for doing uh, business across the globe. So we need them for us to have uh, jobs, for us to have services that would address our needs and wants as uh, human beings. Controversial, uh, people most ask questions like, number one, why does a business exist? Number two, what is the purpose of the for-profit firm? But others, in contrast, uh, look, there are a lot of, uh, what do you call this, typos here, uh, the views of businesses who are, who are good for a broader perspective, such as uh, David Packard. So, if you notice here, uh, it becomes controversial because people are asking questions on why does a business exist and what is the purpose for the of the for-profit firm. So let's take a look on David Packard's perspective uh, on this matter. He said, I think many people assume wrongly that a company exists simply to make money. Right? Um, when people see businesses in their society, in their community, they just simply think that this exists because of money. But according to David Packard, it's wrong. Let's uh, get uh, to have to read this further. Well, this is an important result of a company's existence. We have to go deeper and find the real reasons for our being. Disregard this number 54 here. A group of people get together and exist as an institution that we call a company so that they are able to accomplish something collective, collectively that they could not accomplish separately. They make a contribution to society. Let's, uh, they call, uh, let's dissect this uh, meaning or the perspective of David Packard when he said, it's not just for profit. This actually are individual people or group. Individual comes into a group of people. They get together. They build, they build an institution which we call company so that with, with these collective initiatives, creativity and ideas, they can accomplish uh, something that would make a good contribution to society. Example, uh, Steve Jobs. Do you know that he was not really there when when the development of uh, the, the computer that they first sold? He was not really the, the, the major one who, 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 who put things together in as a hardware for that keyboard or something, a computer. He just tapped his uh, friend. I forgot the name of the friend. So he tapped his friend to help him because Steve Jobs had a brilliant idea. He, he, he foresaw something that was not yet in the market during that time. So if Steve Jobs was 
just alone with his thoughts, he wouldn't make it. So, he, he tapped his friend. Parang kababata niya yun eh. To, to help him out, materialize the, the concept that he had. So, this is a, a, a concrete example of what David Packard is saying here. That it is not just uh, a money-making entity. The business is not just a money-making entity. But you need to look at it as well as a group of people getting together. They exist as an institution. In the case of Steve Jobs, Apple. No? So we call a company so that we can they can accomplish something collectively. That they cannot do it on their own selves separately alone. So, look at that. Fast forward. Look at what Apple did in the history of technology, right? So, it's entrepreneurship. It's it's a uh, it's creative thinking and working together with other individuals, not just for profit, but really delivering a good contribution to our existence, to our society. A new definition of corporate social responsibility. Let's try to scan this uh, very uh, fast. Lang. So as CSR, uh, a responsibility among firms to meet the needs of their stakeholders and a responsibility among stakeholders to hold firms to account for their action. This means um, it, it goes side by side or vice versa from the standpoint of the firm and of its stakeholders so it's a responsibility of the company of the firms to meet the need of their stakeholders and vice versa that the stakeholders also will hold the firm accountable for such action all right so the firm goes to the stakeholder stakeholder make the firm accountable for the promises that they made uh, to, to the stakeholders. So at the end of the day, we are pleasing here the stakeholders. And as in the in the lecture lecture one video, we have already discussed the who are the stakeholders. So we'll not uh, discuss it further here. CSR provides a framework in order to enable each firm to identify stakeholders that institute its operating environment and prioritize their strategic importance. Incorporate the concerns of its stakeholders within their strategic outlook or risk losing legitimacy. So this is a, a self-explaining statements. I, I, I don't think I need to still discuss this further. I just read it again. The framework was a model of Archie Carroll or Archie Carroll. He defines CSR in the following way. The social responsibility of business encompasses the economic, legal, ethical, and discretionary expectations that society has of organizations at a given point in time. Ulitin natin na. The social responsibility of business encompasses the economic, legal, ethical and discretionary expectations that society has of organizations at a given point in time. What does this mean? Um, more than establishing a, uh, a for-profit firm or to, to establish a firm to earn a, a money or profit and seeing this by David Packard, no? seeing the firm as a group group of people getting together to, to create something, a contribution to our society. That this, uh, according to Archie Carroll, social responsibility of business encompasses saklaw lahat, cover niya lahat, economic, legal, ethical, and discretionary expectations that society has of organizations at a given point. So, if you have uh, studied the subjects on consumer behavior, culture, and marketing, if you have that, you will uh, know that um, 
this specific statement relates to the changing culture, not really fast changing culture, but um, the society in general we're in, it is so dynamic that um, it adapts to changes, to innovations, and to whatsoever that is there. So what we're talking here is the, 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 the social responsibility of businesses that it really covers the economic uh, aspect, the legal aspect, definitely, because regulators are there uh, to punish or reward or whatsoever if uh, the company produces something good or bad. Ethical, that means doing the things the right way, um, fairly, with just, and discretionary expectation that society of organization at a given point in time. Let me give an example here. In the Philippines, we are still considered as they somehow, we, well, uh, five years back or ten years back, the country has been tagged as the uh, most, uh, how do you call this, conservative across Asia, I believe. It's, it's it's put it they put it that way rather so it was not so common back then that uh, yung cursing or pagmura or uh, dancing naked ladies dancing in front of cameras or wearing uh, wearing two piece clothes or whatsoever what what they call that sexy um, uh, uh, um, appearances on screen or on the camera. As a conservative one, as a conservative culture in, the, in, in Asia, it, it was not really that common during those years. So, now, it has somehow been accepted by the common people who are also exposed to this kind of uh, a way of life when when the new invented app like TikTok, uh, well, YouTube was there already, but the content in the past was not that, it, it, it is not like that now, that it's so vulgar and there are a lot of, you know, uh, need to have SPG because children are also into TikTok and Facebook and whatsoever. So what I'm saying here, a, a discretionary expectation that society has. I believe there are still uh, many in the country who are in the conservative way of, you know, protecting the young ones being exposed to this kind of uh, lifestyle and this kind of, of, uh, uh, somehow nud nudity no? in a way and parang malalaswa na mga video just to get uh, likes, shares and subscribers that when you become a business entity you should have check your social responsibility at a given point in time that uh, uh, it's a discretionary thing, by the way. Yeah. When, um, depending on the expectation that society has. And I believe still in the country, uh, though there are already a lot of tiktokers or vloggers who are doing that, there are still many people as well uh, being conservative and protecting their, their young ones to get exposed onto this kind of um, of things no? na hindi masyadong maganda sa mata ng mga bata. So, if you are a vlogger or content creator, then you should, by all means, remember your social responsibility. Um, if the government will will ask you to, to pay taxes because you're earning as well, then it should be part 
it should be part of your of your responsibility in the society to pay it and to you know to obey the rules and regulations of 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 the Philippines so yun um in summary this this statement really uh, tells us that um we should be careful as a as an individual or even as a group as a company to check the impact of what we are doing as a company because we are there not just to make profit but to make a lasting impact to our stakeholders as well so we need to consider that um, a business has a social responsibility which encompasses the economic legal ethical and discretionary expectations that society has of organizations at a given point in time uh, how, uh, in due time i don't know when 10 15 years from now, 20 years from now if this has been so common already in the country and uh, culture has you know adopted this way of seeing this kind of things perhaps we can no longer hold the uh, businesses who are doing that or the vlogger or whomsoever content creator doing the same um, um, nudity or whatsoever there if and only if the culture the society has changed that's why it is being specified here that the discussion expectations that society has of organizations at a given point in time because again it changes um, in the past 10 years the culture has the 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 culture in the country in, with the advent of um, accessibility by the internet of of most of the young ones of the Filipinos then it might change and we might not be able to call out this content creator whatsoever they call themselves or especially when they're already earning and paying taxes if the society has accepted this kind of medium already but for now i believe there are still a lot of of individuals who are into conservatism as well and protecting the young ones no? in a way so they should be called for for uh, 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 social responsibility across all these these aspects that is um, aspects aspects made by R.K. Carroll. The corporate social responsibility hierarchy. Bullet one. Uh, fundamentally, a firm's economic responsibility is to produce an acceptable return for investors. Definitely, because these firms are getting investors no their fund to to inject into their capitalization for them to grow their uh, products or services so that they can serve more so that they can give more to to the society number two an essential component of pursuing economic gain within a low-based society However, it's a legal responsibility to act within the framework of laws and regulations drawn up by the government and judiciary. Okay, you need to remember that this reference book, uh, the context of the reference book is in the US. So if we will be going to apply this in our context here in the country, this is also true and applicable, right? So. Uh, an essential component of pursuing economic gain within a law-based society. Diniscuss na din yan ni R.K. Carroll, di ba? That uh, it is with the bounds of law, in the bounds of law, we have a responsibility to act and to follow. So, pag sinabi ng government that this is bawal because substandard, say sa mga helmet, substandard, or yung mga fake na mga items na hindi na poprotektan yung consumer kaya nagkaroon ng consumer act diba? to protect the consumers from this fake and irresponsible selling of not approved goods or services so government should step up that level 
taken one step further a firm has an eth ethical responsibility to do no harm to its stakeholders and within its operating environment this is this has also been clear in our lecture video one you know, uh, the mining in the oriental that example Finally, firms have a discretionary responsibility which represents more proactive strategic behaviors that benefit themselves, society, or both. Okay. Arang, inano lang to ni Carol yung sa, yung sa kanina na statement. Iniisa-isa lang niya dito talaga. What does that really mean? As a firm progresses toward the top of Carol's pyramid, its responsibilities, so, a pyramid siya, its responsibilities become more discretionary in nature. In Carol's vision, a social responsible firm encompasses all four responsibilities within its culture, values, and day-to-day -day operations. I have explained that in the previous slide, or previous slide already. Okay. The model was useful, but its typology is rigid due to environmental changes. Ethical and discretional in Carol's model is becoming increasingly necessary. We, we, we boil down to that ethical and discretional. Th th those are the necessary thing in the pyramid of Carroll's hierarchy of the CSR. Therefore, with this, the definitions of CSR can and do evolve. Because again, uh, in the fast-changing environment that we have, we can't but just see and adapt on, on what uh, the society is showing us. So, there. CSR, five dimensions identified in different definitions. Environmental, social, economic, stakeholders, voluntariness. So these are five dimensions identified in different definitions. So, there are also variants of CSR across countries and cultures when it comes to definition. Let's try to check with this uh, definition ac across cultures. In China, the notion of companies looking beyond profits, the role in society, is generally termed corporate social responsibility. So it refers to a company linking itself with ethical values, transparency, employee relations, compliance with legal requirements, and overall respect for the communities in which they operate. It goes beyond the, the occasional community service action. CSR is a corporate philosophy that drives strategic decision making, partner selection, hiring practices, and ultimately brand development. Okay, determine it that way. When when a company goes beyond but goes beyond profit by just merely taking profit out of what they're doing in the business. So determine it the corporate social responsibility, linking it to ethical values and transparency. So that's for China. In the UK, uh, it is about businesses and other organizations going beyond the legal obligations to manage the impact they have on the environment and society. In particular, this could include how organizations interact with their employees, suppliers, cost, customers, and the communities in which they operate as well as the extent they attempt to protect the environment. Um, yeah, this has also been adapted already eh, in the SGD. The, how did, I forgot it. SGD, ilan na nga ngayon? 14, 16, or 18? Forgot. Way back, I had in my thesis, parang na-discuss ko yan sa thesis ko yung social goal development in for the whole world yan ha. So part of it, there are, a uh, uh, part of those SGDs have been already has, has been practiced by other countries already like this in the UK take care for the environment and mitigate or listen lessen the impact of of what they are doing no in the society sa atin yan, mining pa rin for now kasi yun yung pinaka clear na example natin what happened in Davao Oriental. Uh, the EU, CSR is a process to integrate social, environmental, ethical, and human rights concerns into their business operations and core strategy in close collaboration with their stakeholders. This is self-explanatory. This has been 
though there are variances of definition, we can see a common pattern of what CSR really is, right? In the, uh, the UN, CSR can be understood as a management concept and a process that integrates social and environmental concerns in business operations and a company's interactions with a full range of its uh, stakeholders. Same, right? It just varies, not really varies, but there are variances of definitions that when you try to check on it, they are all have the same uh, footprint, fingerprint whatsoever. There are a com common theme in the variances of the definition of CSR. Therefore, CSR def definition is fluid. It is then dangerous to the extent that it means different things to different people. Right now, we're in, in a free-for-all in which CSR means whatever company wants it to mean. From sending employees out in mat matching t-shirts to paint a wall for five hours a year, to recycling, to improving supply chain conditions, to diversity and inclusion, this makes it difficult to have a proper conversation about what CR CSR should be. Um, because when you just, let's say, take out the meaning of China, or the UK, or the UN, then there are there are specific provisions that um, not really capturing everything. But to me, when we study CSR, we can check in a way that um, the common theme of this is having importance uh, businesses should have importance no no businesses should have uh, a good relationship with its stakeholders and the stakeholders again going back to our lecture video one it is everything which directly or indirectly uh, involved in the business so CSR can differ and can be the means and end. So the way of delivering products to the market, firms action in the larger society by bringing stakeholders concern to the foreground. So the two. The way of delivering products to the market and firms action in the larger society by bringing stakeholders concern to the foreground. Putting emphasis on the stakeholders on the one side, the end, the means is delivering of products to the market. To a deeper understanding, it can also mean as a process and outcome. Let's try to check it. Firms reaction plan to their stakeholders collective set of needs, actions, outcomes, outcome, actions that define the requirements of stakeholders demand. Because um, a firm cannot just create something without realizing the needs and wants of the stakeholders. Nisha vice versa. Uh, as a business person, you check the demand of the stakeholders and then you can now create a, a, uh, a, a product to deliver, no? a means to deliver. So that you can hit the ends, the stakeholders' demands. Hindi ito yung mga manager ha, na nagdi-demand for profit, for salary. It's not that. We're talking about the generic stakeholders here that the firm has uh, has a um, has managed to to create their product and service. Uh, has managed to offer their services and products. So responding to the interests of the stakeholders. Norms, values, social expectation, which we study, do evolve. Okay? So, yun. You just need to remember that uh, in this discussion here, um, the CSR can mean parang lumalalim na yung panel natin and unfiltering that, oh, it's just a process and the outcome. We're in this here are the products being delivered because there is a demand and to meet the ends of the stakeholders. 
and you need to to check if the needs of stakeholders are being addressed like their norms social uh, expectations their values so business model incorporates with stakeholders concerns results to firm success right so CSR concerns an even blend for different issues. Same stakeholders, but the issues that motivate them, then changes. So, yun yung nag evolve Kaya, yung kay Carol, Archie Carol kanina, yung nasabi niyang at a given point of time. So, we need to adapt. So, uh, what, what can be our example here later? We will give one. Firm fails to address the concerns of stakeholders leads to bankruptcy definitely because uh, no one will uh, how do you call that no one will wala nang wala nang mag uh, ano sa kanila wala nang mag uh, avail no? no one will patronize their their services and products if they cannot address that corporate social responsibility managing the relations Stakeholders, firm business plan, leads to success. So at minimum, firms should comply with legal or regulatory requirements. Breaking the regulations, breaking the law, and that will not result to a socially responsible behavior. Firm is minimizing competition risk while maximizing potential benefit by fully embracing CSR and incorporating it within the firm's strategic process. Kasi, uh, when you are in the CSR part or arm wing CSR of a company, there you can realize the core values of the company being exercised by those who are in the CSR section of the organization. Mostly, they become subsidiaries of the company, the CSR. Some become foundations um, to, to take care of the giving back socially to the community part of the growth that the company has experienced or has achieved they are giving it back via the employment of the so-called corporate social responsibility Nowadays, CSR is recognized as new performance driver, particularly because it encourages innovations, reduces costs, and brings employees around a meaningful project. Because when people are, our employees are, are being motivated to do something that would make their lives meaningful, then they are engaged. They can be creative. They can be excited to go to work. And when you are into this uh, kind of organization, you can't but, uh, well, in my experience, because I have been, uh, I was once working in, uh, in a CSR company. It's, it's like a CSR company because we are for the poor. We are, we are for a non-profit uh, business. And we are doing, we are helping small businesses like, Taho vendor, sari sari store, fishbowl vendor to jumpstart their their uh, small businesses, and that in itself drives the employees to be to be uh, how do you call this? To be active in what they are doing, to be to be passionate, to be. Um, how do you call that? I, I'm lost of words now. But now, uh, what I'm saying here is that employees can be rallied if uh, we employ some meaningful project uh, for, for them. So I guess that's the end of the series two. So in just a uh, summary, you, know, you need to remember that in the uh, in the study of the CSR, um, we need to understand that um, good governance is important. Um, 
businesses, firms have social responsibility that encompasses economic, legal, ethical, etc., etc. Halos lahat yan. Um, the study of CSR in this lecture series 2 tells us that even if there are variants of definitions of what CSR uh, is, we can check its um, common theme wherein profit is already given if you establish a business, but after, after focusing on the profit, what's next? It's really addressing the, the main point of the existence of the business wherein it helps um, stakeholders to get what they want, what they demand, um, and make them happy. Make them uh, contributing to their needs and wants, addressing it and all of this stuff. That after all the profit has been made, you are now taking care of the other aspect of just establishing a company for profit alone. So you have you are becoming a heartful entity that um, put not really primacy maybe because of capitalism but put in the pedestal the stakeholders that you really wanted to serve so there um I, for for this video i want you guys to to write a paper kahit nakatype no like what you did one pager lang din siya and and uh see to it that you are you are giving your reflection or reaction paper on this lecture series 2 so parang what's your take away in this lecture series 2 in our study of good governance and corporate social responsibility so you 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 submit it to me as part of additional requirement and lagay nyo lang yung ano lecture series 2 as subject title lecture series 2 and there and and then your your section right so uh that's it thank you